Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So we're going to be covering today's videos. We're going to be going over statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we are going to be using reactions in order to find a force range value for a certain type of load that will generate the reaction. So this will be 11th part in our series. And this one's going to be kind of the reversal of what you would think a typical reaction problem would be with your typical reaction problem being that you know your forces and your loads and you have to determine your reactions. With this one, we are going to be told what our reactions are, what they can't go over in value. And then we have to determine what range of loading will create these types of reactions. So it's kind of a reversal problem here. So what we got here is that we have three loads are applied as shown to a light beam supported by cables B and D. Knowing that the maximum allowable tension in each cable is 12 kilonewtons and neglecting the weight of the beam, determine the range of values for Q for which the loading is safe when P is equal to five kilonewtons. So what we got going on here is this problem is saying we have to determine what Q is such that our reactions here at B and D do not go over 12 kilonewtons on each of these. So we have to determine what minimum amount of Q will create, um, to, uh, not go over 12 kilonewtons in either one of these, and what maximum range of Q does the same thing. So we're looking for a load that will create these types of reactions. So what we're going to do is that we are going to uh, some moments at one of these reactions for one of our boundary conditions for Q and then repeat the process for the other one to get the upper or lower boundary condition for Q. So in order to solve what Q is here, what we're going to do is that we are going to some moments at each reactionary point. And let's start with the first one being at point B equal to zero. So what this is going to give me is that if I sum moments about point B, the 12 kilonewtons that reacts through the cable in point B that is pulling back upwards <clears throat> will not occur in this equation, only this one at D. So this will give me the value of Q that will produce um, this 12 kilonewtons of reaction at point D. So let's work this through here. So we would have 7.5 kilonewtons at the far left times its perpendicular distance to point B, which is 0 0.5 meters. It will be rotating counterclockwise about point B, so it is positive based upon my sign convention. The 12 kilonewtons at B goes right through B, so we're not going to include it. And then we have our point P, which is 5 kilonewtons of force, times its perpendicular distance to point B, which is seven or 0 0.75 meters. And this one will be rotating clockwise about point B, so it'll be negative. And then I'm going to have plus my dy reaction, which is the 12 kilonewtons or the d reaction inside that cable, times its perpendicular distance over to point B, which is 2.25 meters. That will be rotating clock or counterclockwise about point B, so it'll be positive. And then lastly, we have Q, which is unknown. And its perpendicular distance over to B is three meters, and all of that is equal to zero. So Q has to be such a value that it results in D having 12 kilonewtons of tension throughout that cable. So what value of Q causes this? Well, you would just rearrange and solve for Q because it's your only unknown in this equation, and you end up with nine kilonewtons of force in that downward direction. So that's one of my range values. So let's find the other, repeating the process, but this time summing moments at point B or point D to get point P. Oh, let me just repeat that. So many P's and D's and B's in here. So we're going to repeat the process, but summing moments at point D, and that will give us Q that will create the 12 kilonewtons at point B. All righty, so let's just change colors here. So summing moments about point D equal to zero. Well, we would have the 7.5 kilonewtons. Once again, it is rotating counterclockwise about point D. Its total distance over to D would be 2.75 meters, positive rotation. And then we would have point B, which is the 12 kilonewtons of force in that cable maxed out. It'll be rotating clockwise about point D, so it's minus 12 kilonewtons times its distance of 2.25 meters. And then we would have our point P of five kilonewtons. That will be rotating counterclockwise about point D. 
which its distance to it is 1.5 meters. D goes right through it. So the 12 kilonewtons goes right through that point. So don't include it. And then lastly, we have Q over here, which will be rotating clockwise. So it is minus Q times its distance to D, which is 0 0.75 meters, all of that equal to zero. So this Q will give us a value such that it produces 12 kilonewtons of force in cable B. So Q is the only unknown in here. So let's rearrange and solve. And when you do so, you get 1.5 kilonewtons of force in that downward direction. So using this one and this previous answer up here, we can get a range of Q such that each of these cables does not go over 12 kilonewtons of force because what we have found are the limits for each of these. So with 1.5 kilonewtons of force, Q must be larger than that or less than nine kilonewtons. So anything in this range will produce some value in the cable less than 12 kilonewtons of force. 1.5 will produce the maximum amount in B. The nine will produce the maximum amount in D. And that's how you would solve this answer. And as I stated earlier, this, this problem is pretty much knowing what your maximum reactions have to be. And then you just work backwards from normal reaction problems to determine what type of force would create those reactions. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done this already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.